Our next example using spherical coordinates is to find the volume of the region that's above the surface phi equals pi over 3 and below the surface rho equals 4 cosine phi. So let's first try to figure out what this region looks like. And let's look at the bounding surfaces. So what about the surface phi equals pi over 3? Well, we could convert this into Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so remember that z equals rho cosine phi. Now, phi equals pi over 3 is true if and only if, well, then the cosine of pi over 3 is a half. So this is equivalent to z equals 1 half rho. And to understand what this means, we can square both sides to write this as z squared equals rho squared over 4. And remember that rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So I have that over 4. And then multiplying both sides by 4, I get the equation 3z squared equals x squared plus y squared. I had a 4z squared and subtraction to z squared. And we recognize that this is the equation of a cone. Now, we don't actually want the whole cone, because we, we squared the equation that we actually want. What we actually want is for z to be the positive square root of this equation, because rho is, is never negative. Okay, so we actually only want the upper half of this cone. So let's draw a picture of it. So it's going to look something like this. So this is the upper half of the cone, 3z squared equals x squared plus y squared. Now actually, if we really understand what the spherical coordinate phi means, then we can recognize that this is a cone without solving any equations. Because phi is basically your latitude. So we just sort of take this latitude line, and then it doesn't matter what radius you are, and you get a cone. So if you look at, let me draw it down here, if you look at surfaces where phi is constant, well, if phi is 0, you just get the positive z-axis. So that's kind of a special case. If you set phi to be constant and less than pi over 2, then you get a cone. If you set phi to be constant and equal, to pi over 2, then you get the xy plane. That's also kind of a special case. If you set phi to be a constant which is bigger than pi over 2, then you get the lower half of a cone. And then the other extreme is when phi equals pi, and then you get the negative z-axis. So as phi goes from 0 to pi, first you get the positive z-axis, then you get upper halves of cones, which are gradually um, having lower and lower slopes until they flatten to the xy plane, then you get the lower halves of cones, and then you get, finally, the negative z-axis. All right, so that's the first surface. And what about the other surface? Rho equals 4 cosine phi. So let's also convert this one to Cartesian coordinates. So here it helps to multiply both sides of the equation by rho. So I get rho squared equals 4 rho cosine phi. And then remembering that rho squared equals x squared plus y squared plus c squared, and rho cosine phi equals z, so the right-hand side here is 4z. So that's our equation. I can now complete the square to write this as x squared plus y squared plus z minus 2 squared equals 4. And then we recognize that this equation is the equation for a sphere of radius 2 
centered at the point 0, 0, 002. This is quite analogous to something we did a long time ago when we obtained equations for certain circles in polar coordinates. All right, so let's draw this sphere. So it, the bottom of the sphere is the origin, and then it, it goes up sort of like this. It's a little lopsided, but you get the idea. So this is the sphere um, rho equals 4 cosine phi. So we want the region which is below this and above the cone. So it's this region in here. This is what we're trying to find the volume of. Right. Now we didn't really need to draw this picture to solve the problem, but when you're doing these for the first time, it helps a lot to draw the picture so that you have a better understanding of what the surfaces are and what you're doing. Okay, so now that we have a good understanding of this region, let's evaluate the integral to compute its volume. So the volume is the typical triple integral over the region of 1 dv. Now what was our region here? So we were um, above phi equals pi over 3 and below um, rho equals 4 cosine phi. Okay, so that means that phi is going from what to what? Well, above phi equals pi over 3 means that phi is less than pi over 3 because sort of at the top on the positive z-axis phi is 0. Okay, so phi goes from 0 to pi over 3. So it's a little confusing here because the thing that we're above um, normally that would be the lower limit of the integral, but here's the upper limit of the integral because sort of, you sort of go down as phi increases. Okay, um, And what about theta? Well, theta can be anything, and so to cover everything once, we'll have theta going from 0 to 2 pi. And rho, so below rho equals 4 cosine phi means rho is going from 0 to 4 cosine phi. So rho, rho goes from... 0 to 4 cosine phi. And now we just put a 1, and we don't forget the magnification factor, rho squared times sine phi, d rho d theta d phi. Okay, now let's evaluate the rho integral. So the outer limits stay the same. And here I have rho squared times some constant. So I have rho cubed over 3 sine phi evaluated at rho equals 4 cosine phi and rho equals 0 d theta d phi. So this is blah, 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 blah. And then at rho equals 4 cosine phi, this is going to give me 64 over 3 cosine cubed phi sine phi. And at rho equals 0, I'm going to get 0. And then I integrate this over theta and phi. Okay, now when I integrate over theta, because there's no theta in here, it's like a constant, so I just multiply by 2 pi. So I get integral from 0 to pi over 3 of 128 pi over 3 times cosine cubed phi sine phi d phi. And now we can integrate this as 1 over 4 cosine to the fourth phi. So I get 32 pi, and, and I need a minus sign, so I get minus 32 pi over 3 cosine to the fourth phi evaluated at um, phi equals pi over 3 and phi equals 0. So I get minus 32 
pi over 3 times what? So at phi equals pi over 3, cosine of phi is a half. So I get 1 16th. At phi equals 0, cosine of phi is 1, so I minus 1. Okay, so I have minus 32 pi over 3 times minus 15 over 16. And fortunately, the minus signs cancel out because I'm computing a volume and I need to get a positive answer. And then when I simplify the fractions, I get 10 pi.